Truth of Purpose. Hello, welcome to Youth of Purpose, a show that is here to give you a platform as a young person to be able to contribute to your country's development, but also be able to transform your life. This show is here to give you a platform as young people to discuss everything under the sun that does concern us. Today on the show, we are celebrating the International Youth Day. As youth, do we have a reason to celebrate this day? And uh, what are you contributing to make sure that this world becomes better because of your existence? And today, that's what we want to be looking at. Get onto our social media platforms and tell us why you think the Youth Day should be celebrated. And we are going to be going by the theme of Uganda for this day, International Youth Day 2023, is accelerating recovery from COVID-19 and full implementation of the 2030 agenda and basically we are looking at the role of youth what are you doing to make sure that you transform your lives as we come from uh, the mayhem of the covid 19 pandemic and then focusing on the agenda 2030 which was a bit affected because of uh, the two years that we spent uh, during the covid 19 in uh, you know uh, when we were in lockdown and today we want to be looking at what we can be able to do to make sure that we accelerate uh, the recovery. That's to do with business, in the education sector, in the health sector, and in the very many aspects of life and how we are affected as young people. So today that's what we are looking at. And we want to be talking to a number of young people to tell us what is, what does it mean to them to be celebrating this International Youth Day? Does it have any impact? on their lives and actually why should we be celebrating us let's have a look and let's have a conversation with a number of these young people we'll be right back hello viewers my name is Zemba Rogers and I'm a student from Chambogo University and a proud youth uh, one of the reasons why we should celebrate the youth annually in this country this is because the youth make up the greatest percentage of the population of our motherland, Uganda. And the youth should be prioritized and should be prioritized in whatever the government is planning and what, in whatever our leaders are planning because they are the next big thing and investing in the youth literally means investing in the future. We call upon all stakeholders and leaders of this country to continue mentoring and uh, mentoring and uh, withholding and dealing with challenges which affect the youth because they make up the greatest percentage of the country and they are the one responsible for the future of our country. And whatever we are aiming at to achieve in future, it's basically wise and better to prioritize the youth because they are the main drivers of the agenda. Uh, in regards to the international theme, which says green skills for a sustainable society. With regards to this, uh, the youth should embrace these green skills because they, they are a prerequisite to the green economy, which is, a, which is an evolution from uh, the recent economic systems, whereby uh, within the green skills and the green economy, this requires the youth to embrace waste management, embrace uh, sustainable development whereby they take up opportunities and skills and jobs which are in line with preservation of the environment and which are in line with uh, using the available resources without harming the environment and within this green uh, skills and green economy the youth are bound to embrace um, embrace uh, skills which are climate friendly and skills which, uh, which can tackle the, the effects of climate change. And these skills can uh, involve and involve embracing recycling of plastics, uh, involving themselves in uh, green jobs, for example, installation of solar panels, uh, innovation of uh, renewable energy supplies, for example, gas cookers, solar gas cookers, 
and so on. So we, we, this is a clarion call to our government to enable fund the youth in whatever they try to invent. As we have seen in outside countries and, and, and in our motherland, for example, in Makere University, where the students from the College of Agriculture and Environmental Studies invented uh, a solar cooker. And this was with a, with a reason or an, an ambition of curbing climate change and uh, fitting into the green skills economy and curbing the possible effects of cutting down trees in order to make charcoal and so other and so on with other effects. Then uh, recently also in a certain school in Lila, the youth, particularly in senior two, uh, they invented a solar panel and this was fulfilled as one of the prerequisites of the new curriculum, that's the competence-based curriculum, which calls upon students to embrace uh, creative skills and problem-solving skills. Uh, with regards to that curriculum, these students invented a solar panel, and this solar panel uh, embraced directly what the green skills and green economy and greener world requires us to do. As regards to the recovery from COVID-19, the youth, I should say, they were the most people who were affected by this pandemic, simply because those who, had, who were going to schools were stopped from going to schools. Those who had innovative skills, they are, they, they, their ideas, uh, I should say, they died at birth, simply because uh, the government was busy fighting and curbing the disease and somehow neglected this youth who had come up with ideas. However, I must say it's, it's, it's not too late for the government to, make, to give it a second thought that these youth can, this, uh, the same people who will lead the recovery, the recovery program, thereby uh, I call upon the government and the relevant leaders to give the youth a priority in the recovery process. This can be done by uh, facilitating them and investing in them, educating them about the green revolution, uh, enforcing and making sure that the green skills and the green package can be fused somewhere in the curriculum or in whatever they study at school. So as these people can get out of the school premises with at least job uh, green skills, which are, pre are prerequisite for the green economy. Uh, by this, government can invest in uh, students uh, in regards to recycling of plastics by giving them and equipping them with uh, uh, knowledge and skills on how they can use, best, best use these plastics for, for uh, an important cause or for making new, new, new reusable items, maybe making plastics, uh, for example, uh, plates, Benzines and so on. Then this government can enforce and spearhead the funding of these youth so that they can adopt the green agriculture, whereby they can uh, get rid of use of the pesticide and adopt the new green skills of use of manure and use of the farm produces which are already produced to use them as manure. Then another thing the government can do to embrace this is by enforcing and uh, making sure that these, uh, the youth of this country embrace uh, green skills. For example, the engineers, the environmental engineers, they can be equipped with more skills on how they can best conserve the environment. And this can be done by environmental construction whereby uh, walls can be laid on buildings, green walls, so that they can somehow treat and deform the, uh, the, spoiled, uh, the omitted carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, so that we can live in a hospitable environment and to curb the climate change effect. Good afternoon, uh, dear listeners and viewers. My name is Regan Moivesa from Chambogo University serving as a Guild Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs and a third year student of a Bachelor's of Science in Land Surveying and Information Systems.
Well, in our celebration of the International Youth Day, the biggest things that we need to so much focus on is the empowerment of our youth. But then, in a bid to celebrate, we need to celebrate the youth that have constructively added to this nation. We need to celebrate the fact that we need to endorse the green skilling, that is skilling the 78% of this nation, which is the youth, skilling them in a conservative way that does not degrade our environment. So that what does this call for? We need as youth to be reminded and to reflect on our abilities to so much constructively and contribute to this nation. Well, another thing that we need to celebrate is the role the youth have played in development of this nation. Some call themselves media influencers, other youth, other youth have studied and are contributing as youth leaders. Other youth are skilling people out there in villages and across the nation. We need to celebrate these young people. And how I wish on such a day, we celebrate and award these youth that have always taken the mantle on themselves to contribute to this nation. That is basically a highlight of how this day is meant to be. On the same note of celebration, I think as a nation, we need to reflect on what things we can do for the youth in addition to what has already been done. That calls for more initiatives, that calls for empowering these youth such that they themselves can sustain their lives. Because in development, in our agenda 2030, we have things like no poverty. That means that the youth who are current, current, let's say the people between 20 and 30, should be able to beat and totally cap down this vice which is eating up very many Ugandans. Next to it is we need to have an inclusive society. How I wish one day in this nation we would have a youth who is a very top person on the cabinet because we need an all-inclusive nation, a, no, a nation that does not look down on age but simply focuses on capability and potential of the youth in this nation. It is a mantle that we need to carry on as elders of this nation, as a nation, that we need to brand these youth such that we can even trust them with the most crucial positions. Do you know what it would mean to other youth out there in this nation if a prime minister of this nation was a youth? It would be so big because it would be an all-inclusive. Then there are youth that we cannot forget, and these are the persons with disabilities. So we need to reflect on ourselves on how best we can have these people on board in the most less offensive but accommodative way such that this nation will always live to celebrate the contributions of youth. I would love to let this nation know that these young minds are the biggest that we need to move this nation forward because they are not about to get extinct and these minds can be molded such that we can even have a corruption-free Uganda because it would be very absurd if we had youth currently who are corrupt because these are the people we are going to stay with for 30 to 40 years. But if we show these people the bad in what actions they would do, we would definitely have a nation that is more accommodative, that is more transparent, we would have a more peaceful nation because these are the people that will carry on this nation in the years to come. Then, what else can we do as we celebrate the youth? We need to look at the youth that have made it in all sectors. There are youth that have not been so privileged to go to school and they have made it in the business sector. We can have them on board to mentor these youth. We need to have initiatives. We need to have NGOs. We need to have UNDP. We need to have many centers that can come in to support these youth because these are the young minds of this nation and they can really add a very big thing to this nation. On the same note, we need to see how best to skill these youth in line with the practical skills or the skills of a Ugandan. We need to transform Uganda from a monthly earning to a daily earning. If we change these mindsets, then Uganda will be a place to celebrate. Because if we cut the notion of how much you earn per month to how much you earn per day, this nation is going to celebrate these achievements. There are some countries in this world where the youth are doing wonders, where the youth are the richest people, 
Why not Uganda? This is a question that I pose to fellow youth in a celebration like this. That we need to not only undermine our inner potentials, our inner abilities to so much work hard to achieve so big that we deserve. Uganda deserves a lot, but this is going to come from how much effort and what we contribute to this nation as youth. Let's not sit back and hurl insults at those with authority, but see how best we ourselves could have done in these positions of influence. We as a youth of this nation are able to do so much more. I'm looking at all the sectors in this nation where we have parts and roles to play. Thank you. That is basically how a youth needs to celebrate this day. Then, another way is, as youth on our own day, we need to see what can we add to this nation that will always be remembered. Because when we are youth, we don't stay a youth forever. We are youth to motivate others to step in our feet such that we carry on this nation. It is our responsibility. It is the onus is on us such that we carry on these responsibilities. Hello everyone, my name is Oemba Was Decent and I'm a student at Chambogo University pursuing a Bachelor in Library and Information Science third year. Uh, the reason as why I'm here is to talk about the youth. Uh, we are celebrating the youth this year under the theme the role of youth in accelerating and recovery from COVID-19 and fulfillment of the 2030 agenda. Uh, Personally, I'll talk about the reason as to why I think the youth should be celebrated in our nation. Uh, the youth are a great development and a great people or pillars in our nation. They are people that have participated in creating awareness about different programs that have been brought up by the government and I think they deserve the chance to be celebrated. Uh, personally, I think the youth are facing different challenges in our country. They are facing a challenge of unemployment. And I think if we stand up as youth, we can create our own employment opportunity. Since we just lack awareness and training or being innovative, I think as the youth, we can create our own, our own employment opportunities. And as we've been celebrated uh, international wise, we were celebrating International Youth Day under the theme Green Skills, whereby we were talking about the role of youths in creating or oh, making sure that our environment is green on how we can on how we can uh, on how we can create awareness uh, about the environment we live in, on how to keep it green and all sort of that. So I believe if we the youths are celebrated, we can come up with ways on how we can develop our country. My name is Okelo Martin. As we celebrate the youth day, the youth have contributed a lot to the development of the country. They have done great things to make sure that the country grows they have contributed on security, on labor, and many others. But we have some challenges the youth face. And the biggest challenge is the employment, whereby we urge those in authority to create some practical skills that can create jobs for the youth. The practical skills, we can also look at other ways of providing jobs to the youth in the country to empower the youth. I myself, I can say that the youth are the people who are focused and without the youth, I think the country can lack very many things, for example, the labor, because we can't rely only on the elderly. So the youth are doing great, or they are doing a lot in a contribution to the development in the country. And I urge the youth out there 
not to lose focus. We are the biggest population in the country and we remain focused, not looking at other things that divert our minds from development. Let's look at ways that create development amongst ourselves. If there is any other opportunity that can make some little money, we, the youth, let's get involved on those activities. Well, those are opinions from young people and uh, definitely I do believe we have a reason why we should be celebrating this uh, day as young people. But majorly it uh, gives us an opportunity to be reminded that we have a responsibility to be able to play. Uh, being young doesn't mean that you don't have to contribute to you know, what your country is, what this world is. And therefore, we have to live responsibly and know that our lives are so much precious and uh, we are putting a brick in making sure that Uganda becomes better. As young people, we are the biggest percentage of the population of this country. And therefore, our role in all aspects of developing this country cannot be undermined. I thank you so much for watching this show. I hope today's episode has given you an opportunity as young people to celebrate and, uh, you know, know that really you have a role to play and you are actually uh, valued as young people in, uh, in making sure that Uganda becomes better. I thank you so much. See you next time. Youth of Purpose.